This is Arkansas 11, KTHV Little Rock. The Advertising and Promotion Commission was stunned to learn that Mohan Mehta stopped payment on a $45,000 check for rent on this parking garage. Mehta's attorney says Twin City Bank honored the check anyway, nearly draining the Camelot account. And now his client is concerned about meeting payroll and utility expenses. We've been promised by the Camelot for years of things and they haven't lived up to it. And for him to sit there and promise today they may be able to pay utilities and payroll and those things, I think we ought to be aware in case they're not. Last summer, the city struck a deal with Meta. He would operate the Camelot Hotel under Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the interest of preserving convention business expected in Little Rock. If the venture failed, the city would become the innkeeper. We've got to make a big decision here, and, and I think we're past the point of making a business decision on a lot of promises. And I, think we've got to be re I think we've got to be real about it. I'm not here making any promises. I, know I don't want us to spend any money on being in the hotel business. On the other hand, because we own the land, once the building is turned over to us, we're in the hotel business whether we like it or not. And then the choice is whether it's an opened hotel or a closed hotel. Lisa Beckham, 11 Action News, Little Rock. City workers spent all morning going through the Camelot. They were taking inventory of each room and writing down everything they saw. Okay, one dresser, one desk, okay. one bed. All right, one kitchen. Okay, that's it. The furniture counting was a top priority. The numbers apparently essential to a big decision the city was being forced to make. If in fact we uh, do get into full operation of this facility, then we need to know what we've got here. Little Rock is the Camelot's landlord, but the business itself is rented out. This man, Mahan Mehta, holds the lease, but says he can't afford to keep the doors open and has filed for bankruptcy. As it stands right now, Mr. Mehta, Mo, uh, Mehta Associates, is still the debtor in possession of this hotel. Their people are still working here. That's the way it is. It's their property right now. But this afternoon, the Advertising and Promotion Commission voted to change all that, to cancel Meta's lease and take over the hotel. Well, I guess you can say we're in the hotel business. The primary thing to remember is that we're in the convention business, and it so happens we own the land on which this hotel sits. The decision didn't come without a fight. Meta didn't want to hand over the keys unless the city paid him more than $100,000 and through his attorney threatened to strip the rooms if he didn't get it. And then we can look, start looking to that property to take care of our subordination if it's necessary. And we think it probably will be to some extent. But eventually a deal was cut with Meta getting less money but more accounts receivable and he has to pay wages owed to hotel workers. And now Little Rock plans to keep the place open for whatever time $120,000 will buy. Our choices in that time are you know, how we transfer the property to someone else who will run it, operate it, renovate it and or we may end up closing it ourselves and then would have to decide how we dispose of the building. But right now, the Camelot is open, and if the bankruptcy court approves, the city could be running the hotel by tomorrow afternoon. Dinah Tyler, 11 Action News, Little Rock. The 80-year-old bridge has done a good job. At one time, it was the main route from downtown to University and westward. And even though Cantrell and I-630 fill that role now, an estimated 14,000 to 16,000 vehicles a day still use it. It was last repaired in 1965, and uh, several steel beams in there have holes in them. The concrete is very badly deteriorated for aging. It's 80 years old and needs to be replaced. Meanwhile, traffic will have to be rerouted beginning March 1st when the bridge is closed. In fact, there are indications that motorists are already beginning to take alternate routes. Anderson anticipates the main detour route will be south on Woodrow from Markham to either 7th Street or I-630. Traffic signals have been installed along Woodrow in anticipation of the heavier traffic. The bridge shutdown will cause motorists some mild irritation, but for business owners at either end, it will affect their livelihoods. William Knipe at Warehouse Liquors says three quarters of his business will be lost. The store is on the west end of the bridge. People getting off work is when our business is, and it's going to shut it down. But the owner says we will stay open as long as we can pay the bills, and hopefully we'll have enough loyal customers to do that. It's a little different story for Richard Hickenbotham on the east side of the bridge. He and his crew are working hard to get ready for opening day tomorrow of their old world pizza restaurant. Since we have the capital across the street and all the downtown business, I think we'll do pretty well. You know, I don't have anything to, to base it on, but you know, being a new business, we hope to get the capital's business. They can't get across the ride off neither. The new $1.8 million bridge will have much wider traffic lanes. 
and is expected to be open by Thanksgiving. Bob Bray, 11 Action News, Little Rock. What is Arkansas's gun law? Can a gun be carried in a car, under a jacket, or in a purse? Well, it depends on who and where you are. In recent months, gun sales have skyrocketed, but at one of Pulaski County's busier gun shops, owner Don Hill says buyers are in the dark when it comes to the law. We've had people coming in the last two months who have never owned a gun in their life that are buying and don't know what they can buy or how to buy anything else, and we have to sit down and go over the laws with them on this. Part of the reason is that Arkansas law is made up of a lot of gray area. The only provision in the law for an individual to be in possession of a handgun in a vehicle is there's one portion of the law that says if a person is upon a journey. But what constitutes a journey? The law says it's when one is going to a definite point outside the realm of his or her neighbors. But a 1976 ruling stated going from Little Rock to North Little Rock didn't qualify as a journey. Some in the law enforcement community say the law is written to allow officers room to work with. If you could articulate to that officer uh, the conditions upon which you were carrying that weapon, I'm sure that he would let you go about your business. If you're carrying a gun, the safest bet is to only carry it when you're traveling out of county. Keep it out in the open, unloaded with the shell separate from the gun. And if you're confronted by an officer, be sure to say off the top that you have a gun and are carrying it for protection. Convicted felons can't have handguns, nor can those judgmentally ill. The law also prohibits those under 18 from possessing handguns. Although there are no laws against someone having a handgun in their home or business, there are six counties in the state, those being Baxter, Benton, Carroll, Conway, Garland, and Marion, that have possession restrictions. The penalty for illegal firearm possession is a Class A misdemeanor, punishable by up to a $1,000 fine or one year in jail. If you still have questions about gun law, contact your local law enforcement agency. Kirk Erickson, 11 Action News, Little Rock. Joanne Coombs is shooting a gun for the first time, but she's not nervous because she's been taught how to safely pull the trigger. I wanted to make sure that since I had purchased one for protection, that I would not harm myself or someone else unintentionally. She bought her pistol at the Heights Gun Shop, where the owners are cops, and the first rule of business is safety. You need to know how to use it safely, you need to know how to store it responsibly, and you need to know how to take care of it if you ever expect to take care of you. So the officers teach people what to do, because not knowing can be deadly. All the safety rules apply no matter what. They're all certified in gun training, so they really know what they're talking about. Always keep it the same place, the same condition, so when you pick it up or when your spouse picks it up, both of you understand where it's going to be and what condition it's going to be in and what needs to be done to make it operate. School always begins with a long lecture. In this particular class, most of the students are women, but more and more men are signing up too. A lot of men don't want to admit they don't know how to use firearms, and so consequently a lot of women end up being the majority of the class. But we get uh, a lot of each. Partway through the class, the students are told to check their weapons to make sure they're not loaded. Then they line up for more lessons and tips on their stance and grip. And it should feel comfortable. It should feel fairly natural. After that, practice time. Right arm out straight, left hand caught. A lot of dry firing to get a good feel for the trigger. People buy guns, I think, a lot of times for an ego trip, just to, uh, you know, say, well, this is what I've got, and I've got this gun, and they don't know how to use it. And I think that's the reason why a lot of accidents happen, and it is very scary. Their final stop is the firing range. The students had been at school for more than an hour and a half before they were ready to use live rounds. A lot of people have learned from family members. And sometimes if their family members haven't learned safety properly, then they can't teach other people safety properly. But safely firing at a paper target is one thing, and taking aim at an attacker, a human being, is quite another. I would say that, that I probably would if it would come to protecting myself or my family. You have to think of your safety and your family's safety first. And if it were the right opportunity, yes, I would. But here, a gun isn't pushed as the only method of self-defense, or even the first choice for protection. A gun is not a solution to crime. It's an option, but it's not a solution. Dinah Tyler, 11 Action News, Mayflower. Come on, we got to get with it. Okay? Got to go now. Get up! Yeah, that's right. Because I'm going to change my commands a little bit. Get up! You scumbag, you creep. Whatever it is you say.
These women are among a growing number learning to protect themselves without packing a pistol. I wouldn't want to do anything that would be a lasting uh, detriment to someone, but I would want to get away and... Yeah. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Raise your hands up. Okay. <laughs> As a woman, Mary Ellen Thompson knows her own physical strength simply won't be enough to fight off a male attacker. But with the techniques that they teach you, and just knowing where to touch, uh, where to push, uh, so that you can get away, this is why I think every woman should take this, and, and even men, too. There's no strength to it. It's a circle. Tighten up your neck, Miss, because you're going anywhere. <laughs> it's a circle. So you see what I'm doing with the bottom of the chin? I'm helping that leverage, or I can also use the hypoglossal. He's going to move away from it, and when he does, I just take the top of that head and it helps draw my circle, and down they go. Similar techniques are used by the military, law enforcement, and in the martial arts. In Taekwondo, the idea is not to hurt someone, but to be mentally and physically prepared for an attack, and to do whatever it takes to get away. I go so many places by myself or with the kids. It's nice knowing that if I needed to, I could defend myself back and grab his hair real tight, then peel him off of you, okay, and run. The confidence level that Taekwondo gives you also is, is just extremely important in everyday walk of life. Loud command. Come on, real loud. Scream out something. Self-defense courses also teach that the voice can be one of the most effective weapons of all. Psychologically, you feed him to the rapist if I'm telling him maybe what I'm going to do to him. He didn't want to really hear that. Understand? Statistics show that even in broad daylight, on a busy street like this, anyone can become a victim. More than 60% of women who resisted their attackers, either verbally or physically, believe they improved their situation. But experts point out that tens of thousands of women who were murdered weren't available to be asked if they resisted their killers. Lisa Beckham, 11 Action News. The shooting of two women last summer at a Southwest Little Rock ATM set off a great deal of concern over safety at the machines. Little Rock police estimate only a dozen instances of crimes at ATM locations, a number that pales in comparison to estimated 8 million transactions at metro area ATMs last year. Twin City Bank's Susan Blair says there are a few simple things to remember to make your ATM transaction a safe one. One of the first things that you should do when you approach the ATM is just take a good look around you. Just observe the surroundings, make sure that the area is well lit and that there aren't any obstructions from view. Um, and if, the, if there are some obstructions or if the area is not well lit, you should just leave and use another ATM. Blair also emphasizes keeping your secret ATM code number just that, a secret. As you approach the ATM, if there's other people around, you can always position yourself so that they cannot see behind you as you enter your secret code number and as you transact your business. We've had instances where customers have had their ATM card stolen out of their purse or their wallet and they didn't know it. Someone called them later that evening, asked for their ATM card, their PIN number, um, suggesting that they may have won a prize and the only way they could claim that prize is to give their PIN number. Obviously, you should never give your PIN number out over the telephone. Another area where safety concern is growing is parking decks. The concern has meant an increase in business for stripling companies Leo Ade and Bill Beaumont, who offer seminars on personal security. Panic causes quite a bit of problems, yes, but what causes most of them is just people not thinking. Now, we're not wanting people to get into the idea that they have to be paranoid or go around thinking that there's going to be a boogeyman jump out from behind a corner every time they turn around because there is a big difference between paranoia and just being cautious and being observant of what's going on around you. Beaumont advises people to be aware of things like covered stairwells and other dimly lit areas, to not overload yourself with bags or boxes, and most of all, to look and act confident. When you're meeting a group of people, don't shuffle your feet and look down and think, oh, I'm, you know, I don't want to do this, I don't want to be seen here. Look them in the eye, look at them, identify them, let them know that you've seen them. Be confident, show them that you know where you're going, what you're doing, and that you've got, you're, you're there. Follow these safety suggestions and you can make your brain a safe weapon against crime. Anthony Hewlin, 11 Action News. You know, we've had a crime spree in our neighborhood lately. It's the idea for all this, and mainly it's been, it's what I've heard through the grapevine, at home, in their home, and sleeping at night. 
Neighbors in the Forest Park area of the Heights are ready to do something about rising crime on their streets. Well, I think it's important for us to show a united front that uh, we're not a naive neighborhood and we're going to be alert to crime. They're starting a neighborhood watch. This meeting is the first. All the crime watch is is a set of eyes and ears for the neighborhood. They're willing to, they don't have to get out and patrol and investigate and look, but what they're um, actually doing is being aware of what's going on in their neighborhood. What uh, time of the day does most uh, crime occur in the home? There are many questions for Officer Leonard. Her job is to show the neighbors how to work together. It's a program that's paid off in other neighborhoods. But, uh, actually, we're out there uh, backing up our signs, really. Bernie Allen has been part of the Broadmoor Crime Watch since its start six years ago. He says it works. We've got good communication out here. We have a quarterly newsletter that we put out in the neighborhood, and we keep... Uh, telling everybody, you know, call 911 if you see anything happening in the neighborhood. A neighborhood watch is set up with a civilian area coordinator who acts as liaison between the neighbors and the police. Under the coordinator are street captains and block captains. Residents rely on them to help keep the watch working. But everyone helps the police find criminals. They help us in that people are more willing to get involved because they know that their neighbors will in turn do the same for them. Kristen Terrell, 11 Action News, Little Rock. Lisa, you've put in bars here in the windows, and that's good because we want to deter the burglar from getting into business. Uh, that's a first start. It'll slow them down. It'll keep them from getting in quickly, and that's one thing you want to do as a business owner. Lisa Pinkston's been a crime victim more than once. She owns a pawn shop in North Little Rock. One night they uh, threw a brick through the glass door, we put glass up the next day, they did it again the next night. So we put plexiglass up and they didn't do it again. Now Lisa's got wire mesh on the door, but she's expanding her shop. So Sergeant Steve Kennedy is helping her crime proof it. It's going to be difficult to take the items out if they do get in. Uh, it's hard to place anything between those bars and that's good. Kennedy says business owners should try to deter, detect and detain criminals who might try to break in. An alarm system, he says, is a must. Kennedy has some more advice for Lisa on the inside of the shop. Lisa, I've noticed that uh, some of the things are hanging in the window. That's, uh, that's going to be difficult for the officer to see as he drives through checking the property. Probably need to take a few things down so the officer can see down the aisles, which I've noticed are fairly clear, which is also good. But as soon as these things are moved, the officer should be able to detect anyone inside moving around. There's a lot of work to be done in the new part of the shop. Lisa will be buying and selling behind this counter, so Kennedy suggested more bars and a strong door between her and customers. He's also recommending a steel plate in the counter. Lisa's doing well so far with crime proofing, but she will make a couple of changes after today. Um, the lighting outside, I think I'll put more lighting outside so if a police officer drives by, they'll be able to see if the glass is broken, that sort of thing. Crime prevention measures for different businesses are going to vary. If you're unsure about the safety of your business, call your local police department. They'll be more than happy to send an officer over to walk through with you and give you advice. Kristen Terrell, 11 Action News, North Little Rock. Do you worry about a burglar lurking in the bushes outside your front door? Are you afraid someone who might hurt your children is taking a look at your house? If you are, you're not alone. More and more Arkansans are installing home alarm systems. I get calls from young women just out of college, just going to college in apartments, uh, elderly women who are afraid to be at home anymore, uh, guys that just want security for their wives when they go deer hunting or duck hunting. And uh, our, our business is just phenomenal. Greg Agee has 15 employees now. At any given time, he's installing six systems in central Arkansas. People are scared. Business is good. But how much does it cost to be safe? The average cost, if you get a complete security system, doors, smoke detectors, motion detectors, uh, a good quality system, you're going to spend in the $1,000 range. It, it'll run anywhere from $700 to 1000 A.G. says one of the biggest mistakes you can make is to assume you only need an alarm if you have a very expensive home. 
You know, anybody that has a VCR or a family needs security. So whether you have a million dollar tapestry or a VCR, you should be. Yes, sir. Matter of fact, the VCRs get hit more than the million dollar tapestries because they know that a home like this is going to have a good security system. They assume that, that the smaller homes don't. So when they do, they get real surprised. We put quite a few people in jail in, in downtown Little Rock. We've got some good customers down there. There's absolutely no guarantee that a sign telling a burglar you have a system will stop the criminal, but it will make him think twice. If you care enough about home security to consider an alarm system, you've probably also asked yourself the question, do you need a weapon in the house? Do you want to sleep with a gun under the bed? Well, Greg says the answer might be yes, but please take some precautions. If they're instructed in the proper use of that handgun and they feel comfortable that no children or anyone that's not supposed to get to that gun can cannot get to it, then, then I, I think that that's probably a good idea. More people are buying guns and installing That's home alarms. Question. Your home may be your castle, but it's not as safe as it once was. Greg <laughs> Agee is well aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. You have violated an area protected by a security system. Leave immediately. Much of Little Rock's violence erupts in the same parts of town. The county prosecutor says that's no coincidence. Crime is usually highest where urban blight is thickest. They can do all sorts of things uh, in those houses, everything from their drug activities to their gang activities. They can hide weapons there. It's a real haven, and uh, if you think about it, uh, those are the only places that we have oftentimes for kids to go. A few weeks ago, Mark Stodla paid a visit to the Central High area, and then took a ride around the campus. And here, in the heart of Little Rock, he counted 16 buildings that stood boarded up and forgotten. And it creates a very big black mark on the neighborhood. It, it, it beats down the confidence that a neighborhood should have when they see this kind of despair that continues to linger and malinger without being uh, uh, improved. Officials have tried to heal some of the city's sore spots by attacking the festering places first. Now the infamous Sin City is gone, and more than 160 drug houses have been put out of business. We dissipate that drug activity. We break that supply line uh, uh, as, a, as a known drug hangout where people can go and buy drugs. That's the primary objective that we have on it. But Stodler says just shutting drug houses isn't enough. Something has to be done with the empty buildings themselves, or they'll just attract more criminals. He claims that's where Little Rock has a history of falling short, and the mayor agrees. I would agree that we have not been as aggressive as we have been in the last year or two. I mean, I think we are really now focusing on it. Because now there's Ron Brimberry and the Community Development Corporations with plans to rebuild what urban blight has eroded. This is our neighborhood. This is our community. So uh, we want to see what we can do to revitalize and rejuvenate our neighborhood. And we don't like seeing, you know, this type of thing happening to the buildings. Is its first project, the downtown CDC wants to restore six buildings on or around Main Street. Among them, this closed apartment house, which used to be a notorious drug nest. We certainly want to keep the drug uh, traffic out, and we're going to do everything that we can to make sure that that uh, doesn't happen again and we keep crime uh, out. We want a safe and secure place for our friends to live. If the investment dollars arrive, including money from the city, Brimberry says this building and its neighbors can be turned into affordable apartments, perhaps by the end of the year. One bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom apartments to accommodate uh, some single individuals, but also some uh, families as well. Brimberry is convinced the ugly stains of blight aren't permanent, not in this neighborhood or any other. Dinah Tyler, 11 Action News, Little Rock. The reason why we call this generational counseling is because it has to do primarily with your family. Families are so broken and distorted at this time. We need coaches who can mend families back together. On this night, the Reverend Hezekiah Stewart is that coach. He's as vocal and as unrelenting as Nolan Richardson on the sidelines. But in this arena, Stewart steps right onto the court. This woman is going to hurt me. <laughs> he warms up the crowd with funny stories from his own childhood, but he never lets them forget he means business. If these families are to be helped, it's going to hurt first. It made me very angry to know that you would take a gun to school and to 
pull it on another kid. <coughs> it hurt. I know it didn't do nothing to you, but it hurt me. Give me another chance. Try to make up for my mistake that I made. You hold his hand tight and tell him you forgive him. Stewart blames the rise in youth violence, at least in part, on a breakdown in communication. A breakdown uh, that begins with within the family, where and anger I, and hurt replace talking and physical party. affection. I love you. I went to my limits with you. 17-year-old Saul also brought a gun to school. His mother turned to generational counseling as a last resort. Saul has moved an inch. Give Saul a hand. He's moved an inch now. Let's encourage him. He has moved an inch. I'm not going to give up on him. I'm not going to give up. He's 17 years old, but I'm still not going to give up. Because if I give up, where else do we have to turn to? Mother and son may have gone into the Reverend Stewart's arena as adversaries, but with a little coaching, they leave as a team. Now look at the face. Can't you see something has already happened? Oh. Lisa Beckham, 11 Action News, Little Rock.